Friday Night SmackDown had a very good match between Daniel Bryan and AJ Styles. AJ Styles, the new Intercontinental Champion. He has accomplished so much in WWE. Two-time WWE Champion, three-time U.S. Champion, now Intercontinental Champion. And I've been thinking a lot lately about AJ Styles. Uh, The other day, Randy Orton did an interview and said that AJ is a flat earther. And I don't know if that's true or Randy just messing around, but... I know that AJ at times has expressed some frustration with Gallows and Anderson being released by WWE. And, you know, regardless of his personal and private beliefs, when it comes to wrestling, AJ Styles has had a remarkable career. And and I know you know that, but do you realize that essentially he's had his cake and eat it too? And that is to his credit. And, And don't misunderstand me. AJ has worked very hard and has sacrificed. And when you go back to the beginning of TNA, back in 2002, and all those promises that TNA made, he was announced as a signature star. And he was the only one who stayed a signature star. Whether it was homegrown talent or stars from the outside, a lot of people were heralded as the franchise of TNA, only to fall short. And AJ Styles lived up to his end of the bargain with countless outstanding in-ring performances, but, you know, he was also seemingly compensated well for it. And again, good for him. And while he did do some outside dates, relatively speaking, compared to many other wrestlers of this century, whether they had to work the heavier WWE style or many more independent dates, AJ, relatively speaking to them, had a lighter schedule and probably got more family time than many of his peers. And it's my understanding that AJ is religious, which, again, not a criticism at all. I'm just saying that family time, perhaps for him, is even more important than maybe for others. And again, to his credit. I'm not saying he had it easy or didn't earn anything. I'm saying good for him for getting his. And you just look at his run in TNA. He made money great matches, respect the fans, his peers, and probably had a more healthy family life and dynamic than many wrestlers. And even, you know, the bad storylines he was in didn't really hurt his standing with the fans and in the industry, whether it was being Ric Flair Jr. or having an affair with Claire Lynch. By the way, is she back at Universal Studios? Do we know? Anyway, I think fans always understood that these were just things that he had to do. And I don't recall any, like, fan backlash against AJ Styles. But, I don't know, maybe I was a little late to the AJ Styles bandwagon in a sense. I was always kind of cautious on him. Uh, During his TNA run, whenever a fan would say AJ was the best in the world, I would kind of not always agree because I felt there wasn't enough evidence of drawing power and things like that. It just, and his promos, they were not bad, but they weren't particularly versatile. And now in WWE, AJ on the mic, he can be sincere, he can be cocky, he can be a clueless heel. And that's probably the biggest surprise that AJ's got a nice, light, comedic touch. He can sports entertain in WWE. He's got range. And when things went south in TNA and he tested his worth in the marketplace, he went to New Japan and he proved a lot. He led the Bullet Club won the IWGP title, drew well, and showed without a shadow of a doubt he could headline a major promotion. And when he left, he did business on the way out, and that is respectable. And then, not only does he get signed by WWE, he keeps his name, he keeps his image, he skips NXT and debuts to a thunderous ovation at the Royal Rumble. He's been WWE champion and has transitioned into a WWE superstar. He's not seen as an outsider who's just in WWE. He's an important player on that roster. And it's kind of funny, given all of the incredible matches that he's had and the amazing performances that he's given, it's kind of ironic and a little remarkable that his most famous match will likely be the cinematic match against The Undertaker at WrestleMania 36. And while the production, cinematography, and editing were a big part of that, if AJ's acting would have sucked, that match would have come off as cheap and hokey. You know, you knew The Undertaker, he could hold up his end of the bargain, and the Boneyard match was good because AJ was good. And maybe some of it is luck or timing, but I think that AJ Styles, in many ways, in WWE, 
He's one of the smartest men in wrestling when it comes to a wrestling IQ. And the fact that nobody talks about it reinforces just how smart his wrestling IQ is, I think. And when you lay it out, he's had an amazing career with everything you could want. Family, money, respect, fan adulation, and great matches. 